in New Orleans here with Joakim Noah. Last time I saw you, we were lying in a bed together in an RV. Yes. I, this, is, this is much better, I it's, feel like. It was very strange. In two hours. Yes, it was very weird. It was good. I actually enjoyed it. It was like we had a podcast, an untaped podcast, lying in, lying in bed, killing time as these <laughs> people were changing cameras and stuff. Yeah, it was very awkward moments. Um, I don't even know what to say about it. I don't either. Sure. Let's never talk about it again. Cool. Um, the season's been a little rocky. Yeah. But you guys are still, you guys, you guys will not go away. It just won't happen. No. They even, they traded Dang. Looked like, all right, they're trying to get in the lottery this year. They gave up on the season. And then it seems like you and Tibbs and Taj Gibson and some of the other guys were like, no, no, actually, we're going to try to go for the three seed. Yeah. Um, did that trade make you mad? It did, you know. Um, you know, lose my brother. And, uh, you know, when Lou got traded, it was almost like I felt like we failed. You yeah. know, um, like we didn't have it. We, we, we didn't win the championship. And that was, that was the goal. Um, together as a group and I really wanted to you know party with Lou after we won the championship I was right I was already there you know yeah but um it was tough it was tough to see my brother go um you know he was definitely you know the leader of our team and uh the big brother kind of so that was hard and you know Derek getting hurt that was that was tough but you know I think that thing about this league is um, nobody cares you know when when you're down um, other teams smell blood right. you know and the games just keep coming yeah so we had to um, snap out of it pretty fast and uh, I think we're playing pretty good basketball right now it seems like that trade well you were hurt earlier in the year you were a little banged up now you're healthy right I feel great for the most part I feel but that, great from that almost from that trade on you looked like you again, and the team kind of took off, um, which probably would have happened if the trade doesn't happen either, but it did seem like it gave you guys an edge, you know? I think when, I mean, did you feel like the, the front office like was quitting on the team? Like, what uh, was your reaction? No, I don't think so. And I think that, you know, the ultimate goal is to, to win a championship, you know, and uh, um, we might not get there this year, right? but, I think that our mindset is we want to play in those big games. We're young, mm. um, we got talent, but we want to play in those games with, and, and get experience. And then when it hits the fan and we have the guy, we have the guys, and then you'll be ready. We'll be ready. Yeah. Um, Dan goes to Cleveland. It's a mess there. And as you said, that's your brother. Have you? Have you? talk to him you feeling for him over there I mean he, that couldn't have been a worse situation to go to it looks like uh yeah I think um yeah I talked to him but I don't think it's it's fair for me to you know talk about you know it's fair organization and what's going on over there but you must you feel know, you bad that he's in that you know goes from you guys you guys are fighting family to all of a sudden this situation now he's headed for the lottery um I think losing will be all right you know mm -hmm. he's a you know, he's a great guy, one of the good guys in the NBA, uh, tough competitor, uh, and uh, time will tell what happens for, her, uh, for his future. Mm. And I think at the end of the day, he's put in uh, enough work that people know, you know, what he's all about. So mm. I think he'll be just fine. Maybe he'll get traded to a contender this week, who knows? When, I, when we were hanging out, when we were filming that commercial, one of the things that, I, I love talking to you, one of the things that you said I thought was really interesting was you talked about how much you loved Horford and playing with him. And you were like, you were like, that, that's my dude. Like we just, we were, he went one way, I went the other way. We just always knew instinctively where to yeah. go. Now he gets hurt. Yeah. Um, it's tough, man. I mean, these injuries are, injuries are no joke. A lot of yeah. guys are going down. And uh, some of the best times of my life were with Horfy. Yeah. You know, um, there's no, better feeling than winning a championship. And I got to experience it at a young age at Florida with him. He was my roommate. And uh, just on the court, we had unbelievable chemistry. You know, he likes to go right. I like to go left. Uh, he likes to post up. I like to pass from the top of the key. Right. Um, it just, and then defensively, it was, it was crazy. 
So, and then in college, we were kicking some serious ass. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Um, is it fair to say you have a little of that with Taj Gibson? Yeah, Wu was a beast. And Especially the way he's playing lately. Taj is a beast. And uh, I'm really proud of him because uh, he's a worker, you know, and uh, I think that he's, he's a, a great leader on our team, just coming in every day, working out with uh, Mike Wilhelm, his, uh, one of the coaches at Flor at, uh, with the Bulls, and they're just putting in work every day. I mean, even during the break right now, he's staying in Chicago just working on his game. Um, I think he's hungrier than ever. Mm. And um, I mean, I think that his development this year, just he got so much better. And uh, it's just gonna, he's a big piece of what we're trying to do. And then, I mean, DJ Augustine basically saved your season. Who could have expected that? I was big. And I think like when you, when you talk about all these guys, you know, these are all guys who have a chip on their shoulder. Right. You know, um, been through a lot, a lot of adversity. And, and now they're here and they're hungry to prove something. Uh, DJ, you know, we wouldn't be in this situation, you know, two games over 500 with where we were uh, without DJ. Yeah. And um, I don't think I'd be here right now right. if it wasn't for DJ. So shout out to the little homie. What do you think Tibbs is doing right now? It's Friday, 11.45. What is he doing right now? Is he in some dark video room? I hope not. You know but he is, though. I hope not, but he probably is. <laughs> He's definitely not in Mexico, like on a little three-day vacation and on the beach. He needs it. Yeah. He needs it, but, you know, at the end of the day... How many hours a day do you think he works? I mean, it's, is it it's, over all day, it's an all-day thing. I mean, you know he's the first one in the gym. Um, and you might come into the Berto Center at night, you know, to get some treatment or whatever, and you know he's in the office just doing something. It's a lot. It's, it's, I mean, at the end of the day with him, is he can, he, he can be who he is because you know how much work he puts into it. Right. And you have to respect that. Well, that was funny when that, I mean, the dang trade wasn't funny, but it was funny to me that people were writing you guys off because I was like, there's no way these guys are, are they're not going to give up the season. Like, Tibbs, like, Tibbs is, is wired to coach a team that's a transition team for the lottery. That's not happening. Like, he, I thought he was actually going to work harder. I'm sure he was like a maniac the next week or so. What's your favorite Tibbs story? Give me one. My favorite Tibbs story. Um, if you had to describe him in one story, what would it be? I, <laughs> I used to train I trained with him a lot in the summertime, so he was working me out in the summer at the Birdo Center. And um, after a month of dealing with Tibbs every day, uh, you know, always having him do extra and extra drills and extra drills, I told him, you know, Tibbs, if, if we weren't winning this many basketball games, I would, I would really hate you. <laughs> And, uh, and he said, trust me, Joe, I feel the same way. <laughs> so that's my favorite. So that's you're like the odd couple. <laughs> very, very odd. How many couple. years has it been now with him? Four? Yeah. Yeah, going five. This is my fifth. What are, the, what are you feeling the Chicago fans are thinking of this team right now? You feel like you're feeling the love? Because you guys are like the gritty band of underachievers now, or overachievers now. You know, I think... Um, I think the people in the city are proud, mm. but um, at the end of the day, you know, the goal isn't, it, this is, it's all love and it's great. We have the best fans in the world, but the goal is it's still to win a championship. Right. And I know that the fans will be even happier when that happens. So like I said, right now, it's all about, you know, just getting better, keeping our minds on pro progress and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, whenever that is, whenever the time comes, I know Derek's putting all his work, and uh, we just got to keep keep getting better so that one day when our time comes, you know, we right. get that ring. I, Hibbert was in here before you. I asked him if he hates Miami, if that team has to feel like they hate Miami, and he, he didn't think so. He just felt like they're in their way. They're going to try to beat him. It seems like you, you kind of work up 
some sort of hatred for the people that are in your way, these teams, right? Is that fair? No doubt. No doubt. You know, I, I train every summer. Um, I train all year, you know, thinking about those guys. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely not love. Everybody, they want what I want. I right. want a championship. And so I'm not going to be cool with um, guys who are in the way. It's just, uh, I mean, I think hate is a, is a strong word. Sports I've, hate. I've used it. I've yeah. used it before, but uh, at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, there can't, it, it can't be, it can't be love, I'll tell you that. You didn't like my Celtics? Nah. That got a little rocky with us. No, of course. You were my least favorite player for a couple of years until we shared an RV bed. <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about that. <laughs> it's on videotape. We taped it. Yeah, you and KG. Are you and KG ever going to be friendly? Is there a time 10 uh, years from now where you run into each other and decide to get a cup of coffee? I mean, you know, K KG was my favorite player growing up. Until he turned on you. Until we started competing. And he, he did turn on he me. He said mean things to you. He, <laughs> he yelled sure at you. He, he used bad words. Very bad words. He tried words. to get in your head, tried to intimidate you, and you came right back at him. I was um, impressed, even though I, I didn't like you because you were going against my team. But you, you stood right up to him the whole time. Well, you know what? They got one, yep. and I want that. So, like I said, but at the end of the day, um, he's a hell of a competitor, and I learned a lot from him mm. over the years. And uh, like even even during that time when we were going at it every day, you know, it's it's always good to learn from the the OGs, the older guys. You know what I mean? Right. And even like. These experiences, like being able to play in the All Star Game, to me, that's what it's all about. It's just, you know, seeing the the older guys and right. how their routines and uh, everything. That's that's interesting to me. Plus, you have the ultimate insult when the old guys come at you. Just call them old man. It just it stings. Someday, someday, it's gonna happen to you in your late thirties. You'll be it'll be like you're seventeen. You'll be trying to antagonize some young guy. Yeah, I don't. Uh, the uh, circle of the NBA life. Joe Kim Noah, thank you. It was fun. Good luck in the All-Star game. Good luck for the season. Cheers. I'm not ruling you out in round two against Indiana or Miami. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Could happen. Who knows? It means a lot to me, man. Who knows? I, I think figured that. it would. Yeah. Why did Grant Land pick a British woman? Your guess is as good as mine. Subscribe. Are you in love with me yet? Are you?